StarCast 5, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, gearing up to be a huge event you don't want to miss. Amazing stage shows and live wrestling with shows from Black Label Pro, GCW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and of course, Ric Flair's Last Match, which has an amazing lineup of talent from all over the wrestling landscape. Headlined by Ric Flair's Last Match, and you can follow the story leading up to the match over at Ric Flair's Last Match. Com. We've got new episodes Mondays at 6.05 Eastern. For tickets and more information, go to StarCast.com. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because Vince is gone, and he's really not coming back. But, um, you know, what happens when something happens creatively that Vince disagrees with? I mean, is he, is he going to go away and never call Stephanie about the business that he built and everything like this? Is he going to try to influence her and, and influence Paul? Um, is he going to be a, a consultant? In, I mean, not in, 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 you know, he will never be listed as a consultant. He will not, I'm sure he will not be at any shows. He will not be tearing up scripts. Um, will he have influence as the lead shareholder? Um, probably not. I mean, I guess he, he was removed from the board of directors, which is, uh, you know, so he's gone. He's completely gone. And, um, you know, it, it, the entire business changes because, um, you know, with uh, the whole nature of, of what they're going to look for, of what the thing is. I mean, I've had people from the company talk about, you know, how they feel the booking will start changing. Um, you know, if you look at NXT, you know, and takeover shows and how they're booked as compared to, um, you know, a lot of the matches with the geeky finishes and things like that. Takeover shows rarely had that. Um, now, that doesn't mean that he's going to book exactly like takeover because he knew takeover. The audience for takeover was a different audience from the um main audience but i don't i i don't i think that the lessons he learned from the success of the takeover shows as far as shows and how they were reacted to um i think he's you know there's aspects of that that are going to be um followed up on and also you know one of the real key things is um t talent and aew i think that when contracts are up um you know it used to be that that so many of the guys, just Darby Allen that we talked to, right? We even talked about this the other the other day, you know, where, um, you know, Darby Allen would have been stupid to ever go to WWE. You know, he could have gone to, you know, he was, you know, Gabe Sapolsky tried to get him to go to NXT, and he'd have been gone nowhere, and it would have been nothing. And he's, you know, he never, you know, he's smart enough not to do it. But the fact is, is that, um, you know, Paul Levesque pushed Johnny Gargano. He pushed Adam Cole. Um, you know, it, it's 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 a different mentality. Uh, will he do that on the big picture? I mean, there's people, you know, there who think, okay, Adam Cole could do great in NXT, but he could never do it on the main roster. Um, but yet, Brian Danielson did. So it's, I think that the, um, I think we're going to have a wider variety of wrestlers. I think we're going to have a wider variety of wrestling styles. Um, and I think that we're going to, I think that the television, I really, I'm really optimistic about the television being, um, much better oh, man i'm 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 so wildly optimistic about the changes in television yeah especially if we ultimately get rid of some other people but i mean you know nxt nxt was not perfect but there were a lot of things that he did very well in that original nxt and as you talked about the the idea of hey we're gonna do this big takeover show and we're gonna have awesome matches from top to bottom we're gonna we're gonna create we're going we're gonna to have an end game of these great matches, and we're going to work towards that, as opposed to, it doesn't matter if the match is good or bad, it's whatever story we have. He did a very good job with, with allowing talent to get over. He, there was not a lot of, you know, we're going to cut this guy's legs off, I don't want Adam Cole to get over, blah, blah, blah. As you noted, he pushed Adam Cole's, he pushed Johnny Gargano's, he pushed Sami Zayn. The most over Sami Zayn has ever been was when he was with... Uh, NXT. People talk about the women, and you know, I think with the exception of uh, when Becky got hot in 2018, I mean, I think most people their favorite memories of the women's division was in NXT. So, I'm I'm uh, I'm not one of those people that think that with Vince out, this is going to be a disaster. I'm I'm oh, quite no. I'm quite bullish on this. Yeah, even even you know, I I am too. I'm I'm very optimistic about the future in in many many ways, and and hopefully. You know, as far as, you know, as a company, you know, in many ways, the company was was way behind the times. And I think that maybe, you know, because because Vince 
And I think in in some ways it will catch up with the times. And I think with Nick Khan there, as far as you know the um, you know the business approach and you know um, how they are portrayed in the in the public eye and everything like that i think it's not going to be the evasive thing that you had before i mean to to the level of before um i, I mean I, i'll tell you what i think this is the uh you know it, it's funny because uh um you know you would think that something like this would be really beneficial to AEW, and i think this is the worst thing for AEW because um it's gonna you know you're the, the far more people are going to look and think that I think I can make it there and it's bigger uh, Whereas before you had people who would just go like um, You know like just like MJF right, you know people going well, what about his size? What about his size? He'll never make him aggression. That's out the window, you know, he could he could go there and he's gonna go You know, I mean there's no guarantees for anyone and uh, you know, we're still gonna have scripted promos to a degree um, You know, that's not going to change but um you know the you know just the the nature of who is allowed to be a star um that is that is going to be a lot more um you know there's it's going to be a well lot you're more. right but there's also there's also the aspect of it that you know one of the reasons that uh we saw a big influx one way to AEW and not the other way is you know at the beginning there were a lot of there were a lot of spots available for people in AEW. It was a startup; they could use some big stars from the other side. Now they have so many people there that, for that reason alone, I think that you've got more people now that are willing to potentially go the other way. Like just exactly like Cody did. Like you know, Cody saw the opening. My God, I mean, what main eventers do we have in WWE that are getting pushed right now? He goes over there. He was an instant main eventer right out of the blocks. Because and because if, of, because of, because because he came from AEW. And, well, and, well, yes, and, exactly. But he was a big star there, and the opportunity was there in the other company. If WWE starts getting an influx of talent from AEW, ultimately the same thing is going to happen the other way. There's only so many top spots in WWE, and if they have a big influx of talent, and we're talking two, three years down the road, I mean, there will be people looking to go the other way just because they see, my God, I could be a main eventer over there, and I'm not going to get a spot at the top here. If, it's actually if, good for both. Ultimately, it's good for both companies long term. In the short term, if, it's if, probably not good for AEW. If AEW can, um, if AEW gets the t gets a great television deal, absolutely, because then the money will be there too. But if AEW gets a similar television deal to what they have now, they're not going to have the money, and the top, you know, like the the one side will be able to afford to pay so much more that yes there will always be some people frustrated that will want to go uh but i don't think um you know and, and it also you know when it becomes a situation where the advantage aew had was the better wrestling and everything like that and if that changes um you know you know they be you know the danger of them becoming because i i don't see them as a minor league and i see them as a different league but the danger of them becoming like uh you know the the number two brand the bellator as opposed to what aew is um you know it's it's like you know again it's it's all down the line and then this is all years away but um you know i could see it's going to be a very 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 competitive business and in a sense you know like in theory that's a good thing um and it, again if aew gets a very good television deal um, to where he can spend money on because again he doesn't need he doesn't need a ton of people you only need a certain number of people and 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 the top people really and if you're willing and and have the ability to spend big 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 on the top people commensurate with what they would make in WWE then you will get some top people who want to be top people and everything like that um, but it whatever it is we don't know how it's all going to shake up but it is a completely different shakeup and it is it's still going to be tougher because there are still going to be people who in the past thought i'm never going to wwe who now may look at it and go um you know like uh i think i can make it there especially if we start seeing changes and and i think we will you know as far as like um different types of people being pushed and uh you know i mean we're gonna see, you know it's new creative we're gonna see a whole bunch of changes new stars being made that's that's the one thing i expect a whole bunch of new stars to attempt to be made and some of them are going to make it and you know some some may not and uh i think that a lot of the segments that people think are bad will probably start 
disappearing again. Um, but yeah, it's a whole fresh new coat of paint and it's new, you know, new people in charge. And it's, uh, the business is, is, this is, this is one of the biggest days in the history of the business. And in, in, as far as, you know, in, 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 you know, it's just huge. It's, I, I can't even speak of how huge it is. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.